Mike Tyson. That made him 34-0 after that knockout of Tubbs on the anniversary of this date of 1988. Was Mike Tyson the scariest heavyweight you'd ever seen? The answer is, well, let, let me rephrase that a little bit. He was the scariest okay. heavy, he was the scariest fighter, and I would even say athlete ever at that moment in time. Meaning not with everything we know now, but at that moment, the way he was perceived, there was no other athlete that inspired fear in his contemporary competitors that, and contemporary audience like Mike Tyson, Stephen A. He came on the scene. He was 20 years old when he knocked out Trevor Burbick. He was, guys, the only way to last the distance back then were guys would just tie him up. And it's not just that he was dominant, that he won just about every round, that he was, it was the way he was knocking guys out. Remember how he hit Burbick with the left hook and Burbick tried to get up three times and he couldn't get up? Remember the right uppercut against Marvis Frazier? You too, big kids, but it's not for the faint of heart. You don't have a weak stomach. I mean, the, the way he was knocking guys out graphically was unlike anything else. But also, he was the guy that would have been favored at that point in time. I'm not saying the odds would have been right in retrospect, Stephen A. I'm talking about who was going to be the favorite against anyone. It was Mike Tyson. People just did not believe he could be beat back then. Mike, uh, Max Kellerman, I got to tell you this. I mean, obviously, I'll defer to you with your boxing knowledge, the way you cover the sport exceptionally well, I might add. But I will tell you this. I never thought that Mike Tyson was the scariest, in his prime, the scariest fighter. The person that I thought about was George Foreman. Remember, his first loss came against Muhammad Ali. I believe at that particular moment in time, he was like 40-0 and 0 or 41-0. and 0. It was one or the other with like 38 40 and 0. KOs. This dude, the, the, I mean, 40-0, right? It was 40-0? 40 and 0, 37 knockouts when he fought Ali. 40 and 0, 37 knockouts before he <laughs> lost to Muhammad Ali. And remember how he knocked Joe Frazier upside his head when Joe Frazier literally tried to run away from him and knocked him at the top, knocked him upside his head to knock him out. Remember that? Remember what he did to Ken Norton? Remember what he did to a slew of guys? What about him against Ron Lyle and all of these guys? George Foreman was absolutely spectacular. And it's a personal thing with me, Max, because I was a young kid when him and Allie fought in 1974. I'll never forget as long as I live. My father was actually crying because he was scared to death that Muhammad Ali was going to get killed. Not knocked out, killed. That's how vicious and violent George Foreman was. I know that Mike Tyson, with his speed, the uppercuts, his left hooks, I get all of that. I understand that. But when I look at Foreman and the power that he existed, that existed in him with both hands and his knockout percentage as well, Max Kellerman, I got to tell you, I found George Foreman to be the scariest, not Mike Tyson. Let's talk. Let, let, first of all, Foreman's a great pick. The three that really scared the hell out of everyone were Sonny Liston first, then George Foreman, who was like yep. an improvement on Sonny Liston, and then Mike Tyson. Yep. Okay. Here's the thing about Foreman that you're talking about. It's not just that he was knocking people that looked like their heads off. It's that those guys weren't Tony Tubbs and guys like that. It was Joe Frazier and Kenny Norton. Yes. Frazier had split two yes. fights with Ali, 27 rounds, and, and, and it was like even up. Uh, uh, and, and in fact, at that time, it only fought Ali once and it beaten him over 15 rounds. Kenny Norton had split two fights with Ali, 24 rounds. And was, Ali was lucky to win the second one, and he broke Ali's jaw, and Foreman knocked them both out in two rounds. Just walked through them. It was scary. So I hear you. Your dad's reaction, crying because he thought Ali was going to get killed, that was a lot of people's reactions. A lot of people. The reason yeah. we think of Ali the way we do now is because he beat Foreman. That was impossible. People still can't get over it. But Stephen A., here's the thing. Foreman was a two-to-one underdog when he fought Frazier for the title before he fought Ali. Like, in other words, the way he came up, he was devastating, but it wasn't like people couldn't imagine him getting beat. Even though he destroyed Frazier, he was the underdog going into that fight. Do you realize Mike Tyson wasn't the underdog in any fight until he fought Lennox Lewis, who was 6'5", 250, dominant heavyweight champion, and, and Tyson was way past his prime? That was the first time Tyson had been the well, underdog. So I'm not saying you're wrong. Foreman might have been greater in retrospect. 
I'm saying at the time, contemporary audiences, when they watched Tyson, said, ain't no one beating this guy. Yeah, but I, you know what? I, and listen, it wasn't always the case. But again, I'll ask you, we saw what he did to Trevor Burbick and Burbick trying to get up and, you know, falling down. You know, uh, Pinkston, he, he went up against them. We get all of that. But, I mean, listen, I remember when we talk about tears, remember when they said that Michael Spinks was in the locker room crying because he had to come out to fight Mike Tyson. But he was just a blown-up heavyweight. He was really a light heavyweight, okay? But light fighting at the heavyweight division because mm -hmm. that's where the money was, and I think he got about $13 million for that particular fight. Razor Ruddock was a legitimate heavyweight, and boy, could he hit. It. And Tyson softened him up, obviously, at the tail end. If he hadn't gone through those wars with Mike Tyson on two occasions, all right, that was different. Frank Bruno had a glass jaw. We all know that. And so when you look at some of the caliber of fighters that Mike Tyson went against, it was kind of, listen, I'm not taking anything away from Iron Mike. He's Iron Mike, and we know how vicious he was. But when you look at the caliber of heavyweights that was fighting when George Foreman was taking them out, okay, taking them out, I don't think that the competition that Mike Tyson Even went a? against was comparable to that, Max. What do you say to that? You're right. You're 100% right. From this distance, from where we are now, the answer would be George Foreman at that time. I'm talking about when we were living through it. As that world was living through that era, what was it like? That, by the way, one day it's going to be hard to explain to kids like what it was like to live through the coronavirus and social distancing. It's like a, a different kind of experience or tragedies, different world events that occurred. Where were you when, when JFK was shot for one generation, when the Twin Towers came down for another? The, the point is to, to live through, not with the perspective of distance, Distance, but to live through it, what did it feel like? With the perspective of distance, you're so right about Foreman. It was just, by the way, Muhammad Ali's own corner when they were entering the ring was somber for the Foreman fight, like, ooh, something bad might happen. So you're right. I'm talking about at the time. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.